Hotty toddy, Ole Miss fans, and welcome to the Brad and Chad Show, an Ole Miss Network production, brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, made in the USA. This is the show by and for Ole Miss fans, where you'll get expert insight and analysis on Ole Miss athletics. And now, here are your hosts, former Rebels Chad Flowers and retired NFL star Brad Sowell. It's podcast time. All right, Bradley, are you ready? Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, last last time I talked to you, you had a pet pig. Um, I do. Um, you know, one of the hot button issues with me is the pet pig, Justin. Um, <laughs> if um, if you don't have children and you want to mimic a newborn all the way up to a sixteen year old in the same day, get a get a pet pig. It is yeah, um, it's uh, it's special. I'll I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I bet. I bet. How you been, bud? Good, man. Just um, just moved down to to Madison, so you got to ignore my my setup here. It's it's quite quite bare, man. I got everything in boxes. Um, yeah, it looks you know, like you're uh, talking to us from the void there. So uh, just trying to make sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting out of boxes. I'll get it all up at some point. Um, but yeah, it's it's been cool. It's been, it's been a cool little move down here. Did you do the move yourself, or did you hire someone? Come on now. Dude, I, there, I, I have surpassed the days. I think I've earned the right to hire someone. Um, yeah, we, we had to. There's no way. Before kids, there's no way we get this get this move um, I, accomplished. So. I can't think of a worse thing in the world than moving. It's by far the worst thing to well, do. When you, plan it, when you plan it out in your head, you, you have this whole plan, and it's like, okay, this is not that bad. Then you start realizing how much stuff you have. Yeah. And then I was getting rid of stuff, whatever. Then you're like, oh, my gosh, man, this is – um, yeah, yeah, it's, it has been a process. Did you get to the point where you were angry at the amount of stuff that you had? Yeah. I'm just mad at it. I'm like, I'm like why? <laughs> why? So I'm trying to throw stuff away, you know, kids, toys, whatever. So it is, um, <laughs> it, it's been a, it's been a trip, but, uh, it's been good for us though. Well, good. Well, uh, welcome everyone. This is the first iteration of the Brad and Chad show. Uh, and like our open mention, it's going to be a show for Ole Miss, right? Uh, Brad and I were talking and what better way for us to spend some time just sitting, shooting it, talking Ole Miss. And that's kind of what we want to do. Um, now, in terms of our schedule, we don't have everything completely finalized, but our plan right now is middle of the week, We'll do an episode kind of previewing the upcoming game. So we'll talk Georgia Tech today. Uh, but since this is our first show, we're probably also going to talk a little bit about how the season has gone thus far, what we're looking for, things we like, things we don't like. And then, you know, and Bradley, I think our plan is once we kind of get a feel for um, our schedules after the games or maybe the Sunday after, we do a live show, maybe try to uh, entertain some callers, call in, talk to us. What are you liking? What are you not liking? We want to hear from you. Uh, so, Bradley, I think that's kind of what we're thinking about doing, especially once conference play starts. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of two Ole Miss guys, um, two Ole Miss fans talking Ole Miss football, we'll break down games, we'll give our honest opinions, what we know, what we don't know, okay. um, to interact with some fans, man. I mean, let's let, let's let's hear what, what, what people you know want to ask or – or want us to dig into and, you know, just relax, relax to Ole Miss fans talk, talking football. So, um, you know, both with Chad, Chad's a Mississippi guy. I'm a Mississippi guy. We, um, we find, we kind of came up with this idea about, we call each other and it's like, we're just talking for, for about Ole Miss for an hour. And it's like, yeah. dude, let's just go and let's just, let's just live stream this. Let's just, we, we have some great conversations for both super Ole Miss fans. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've, we, we know we'll be both know Ole Miss history pretty well. So yeah, that's just, we, we figure, Hey, let's, let's, let's shoot some of the stuff out there for people to see. Yeah, and, and I really want to make sure and thank uh, our sponsors, uh, Blue Delta Jeans, Nest and Wild Mattresses. Um, you know, they're helping make this uh, kind of a reality for both of us. So I really want to thank them for uh, for believing in us and uh, taking this venture with us. Yeah, no question. Lo- love those guys. Yeah. Um, so let's um, let's talk a little bit now about I, – I keep hearing the word quarterback competition. Let's talk about the Ole Miss season this way. <laughs> Quarterback competition has probably been the most used word up until this point. And I watched the game on Saturday against UCA. I'm not understanding why we're still in a competition. Now, Jackson Dart was not great when he came in in the second quarter. But from a pure athleticism perspective and for what the team hopes to achieve, 
right? The the highest of highs that we want to go. I, I can't fathom Jackson Dart not being the starter. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. And I've said that all along, man. I just, um, you know, he is, to me, he has the it factor. You know, when, when you go out there and and, and I watch practice, um, not being able to see a whole lot of camp, you know, Lane's pretty protected in that. Um, you see in the scrimmage, you walk out there, I mean, he just has the, um, he just has the it factor. I mean, he looks athletic. He says the ball zips out of his hand where I think he's at. I think he's just a little bit, you know, he's still young. What what, what Mm -hmm. people have to realize in this competition is Jackson Dart is still a young football player. I mean, he's still technically, I guess he's a red shirt freshman or or maybe yeah, fresh or whatever. He's still a young player as well. So he's not going to be quite like the corral, but when it comes to, Hey, if you, if you're the coaching staff, you're thinking, Hey, do we go with, Jackson Dart take some lumps, or you know, or do we go with Altmeyer, who I don't think has the same upside? If I'm them, I'm going with Dart. I mean, that's just that's just me. I'm getting him as much reps as possible. He looks his better is better than Altmeyer's best. Yeah, and his his best is better than Altmeyer's best, in my opinion. And um, I, I think you know, I think that's probably who they'll roll out there this week versus Georgia Tech. But I'm with you. I, I don't see why this has been a competition. Um, you know, I, I know they they won't bet both players to push each other. Whatever, and you know, all, all due all due respect to Altmaier, you know, he's he's not a bad quarterback, but I just Dart Dart has the the ceiling that I think everybody can see. They just want him to get more consistent playing the position, and that's what that's the position Corral was in as well. I mean, think about Matt Corral when he first came in. I mean, he I don't know if I ever envisioned him. No, what he became. I, I was on the fence if Plumley should start. Right, yeah. I was on the. I, everybody was. I mean, yeah. most people were, and, and, and people that say they weren't were they're 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 lying because <laughs> they were. Right. I mean, because because all you knew about Corral was he was going to fumble, throw a few picks, he was all over the place. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it, to see that turnaround. You're hoping that's what happens with Jackson Dart, and, and I think it can. The the camps for Altmaier, the the thing that I don't understand is they're defending it like it's a. If you remember back with uh, with Texas, you had Major Applewhite and Chris Sims. Right, mm-hmm. that big. It's not the same thing because no, no disrespect, to Almar. He hasn't he hasn't done anything. He's just been in the program longer than Jackson Dart. So I don't understand the loyalty where he deserves this shot because he played in the Sugar Bowl last year uh, because Matt Corral got hurt and he's been in the program longer. Yeah, he knows the offense a little bit better, but I don't think that that is a a reason for him to be as highly considered as people want to. Yeah. Yeah. No question there. And I, I, I also wonder if it's just, Hey, we gotta, we gotta keep this guy happy because we, we don't want to lose him, you know? So if something were to happen to dart, um, you know, you got dent, you, know, you got, you got the whole dent crowd too. We can get into that as well. You got, the whole, <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> you got the dinners as well, man. Like, like that, that's a whole nother argument, but I, I wonder if it's to keep him happy to keep him from transferring. And, you know, and here's the thing, here's the cool part about it is you got both guys are very young quarterbacks. If they both stick around and they both keep working their tails off, you know, obviously I think Dart ends up getting the job, but I think both of them are, are good enough to, to to be solid options for Ole Miss. But the production has to start showing up on the field in, in the first two weeks. Uh, I mean, I can tell you right now, I'm not comfortable with either guy at the moment. Uh, no. I don't feel like – if, if we're playing Alabama this week or, or, you know, not even Alabama, anybody in the SEC, I'm, I'm nervous. Uh, and, and I'm hoping to see something versus Georgia Tech. I would make the argument that if we were playing an SEC team this week, we would not have had a competition, right? It would have been, I think that the schedule has given us the luxury yeah, of yeah. being able to say, because if we're being frank, and we're going to talk to Georgia Tech a little bit later, this is turning out to be a pretty week for starting opponents, right? Our, our season doesn't really begin until October 1 against Kentucky. I don't think we're even going to know what we have until we get to Kentucky. So at this point, you've got to give Jackson Dart all the reps to get that preparation ready because the season really starts in two weeks. That's why That's why I wasn't a huge fan of, of I, I wanted Dart to start and get all the reps possible. He needs to get some confidence in a game like that. You, know, you want him to throw 400 yards and four touchdowns and, and just feel like, okay, yeah, I can do this. It doesn't matter. It, it was Central Arkansas. I get it. Whatever you know, that that's a very inferior opponent. But hey, a little bit of confidence will take a long go a long way. And um, you know, he ended up going there doing doing okay, doing decent. But I would like to him to get in there, just get some reps, give give him the reps, and, and let let's live with them and die with them. And and Lane's not a rotating type guy, so I know this is killing him. That's why I, I think 
if you think of this, you think Lane's just playing mind games, dude. I think he really is struggling to pick one of these guys. And because you think about Corral when he had all his interceptions in Arkansas, he never took him out one time. Right. He's not, he's not, he's not a takeout guy because that, that can, you know, that kills confidence. So um, I, I think it is a real competition. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think you got to stick your best talent in there. And, and hopefully, you know, it starts becoming more consistent. Do as a former player, both in the NFL and for Ole Miss, do you see this or could do you think this could be a distraction? Would this have been a distraction for you? Um, you know, in the locker room, we don't really know who the guy is. Can that have an effect on the team? It could, but you know, I I think what they want, you know, I know for, from an O lineman standpoint, I can't speak for everybody else, and, and receivers are going to have their preferred guy too, but they'll never sure. voice it. You know, that they, they, they like certain throws by certain guys, but as an O lineman, you want to know who's going to be back there, you know. Um, it, and, and I know this because I've, I've talked to a couple of the alignment that, that we have, and you, you want to know who's back there because when you start blocking and and, and and getting a game plan, like every quarterback's different how they set set up on plays, and people don't realize that. Like like it, it is you want to know who you're who you're blocking for, so you get comfortable in your scheme. Like hey, I know on this play that he likes to drop here, he likes to do that. Every quarterback is a little different on how they handle the pocket. You know, some guys like to step up. Some guys like to run outside of it. And I think that'll help our O-line out a little bit as well, knowing, hey, you know, this is my quarterback. I kind of know what he likes to do. I know on certain plays where his eyes go. I know where, where, where you know, he likes to he likes to step up in the pocket. You know, w- you know, if he's a quick thrower, you know, holds it a little longer. That stuff all matters. Sure. So I did mention that, you know, we don't really know what we have until we get to Kentucky. One thing I do know, and I think you'll agree with me, is Quin, uh, Quinshawn Judkins is a star. <sighs> Man, how is he not? I, 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 it just killed. How is he? How's how does he not in a crimson helmet with a number on the side? He, doesn't he look like a <laughs> prototypical Alabama running back? Oh man! And I said this when he came out. I, I saw his film. And I thought, you know, I, I was like, man, this kid's legit. I mean, most high school film looks good, but he looked like a grown man. Yeah, um, he looks like a fast version of Ben Jarvis. Like he's built like Ben Jarvis, but can run like mm-hmm. pr- run. So. Um, man, what a special kid. I'm glad we got him. And I think, um, you know, Evans is obviously an elite back, um, which is actually talking to, to, to my agent and a couple, um, you know, a couple NFL scouts, you know, not too long ago. And they, man, he is, <laughs> they think he's going to be the next, next big thing. So, um, he's awesome. But I think Judkins is just, I mean, he is a great addition for a freshman. It could be just as good, if not better. Yeah, I think with, uh, Judkins and Evans, that is a, I can't think of a better, uh, a better tandem we've had at running back. You know, if you want to go back to your Joe Gunn, Deuce McAllister days. Yeah. Um, but well, I, I would, t- I would have, on, on my team, I mean, I would have taken Bentley and Bullock as my two starters. I mean, yeah. it, it, we, we had Brandon Bolden. That was about, that was about it, you know, and I would have taken, shoot, I would have taken the, the three and four guy <laughs> back when I was here. So they're, um, they're, they're sol- solid room we got there. Other than the quarterback competition, how would you assess the rest of the offense? How have you felt like the offensive lines played? That Offensive line's been up and down, um, but I mean that that's that's to be expected early on. I, I think the the um, you know the concern is hey we play Troy, we play Central Arkansas. Um, you know why are those guys getting by? I mean it, it happens. Um, you're hoping you. Know, I'll judge them. You know mainly when we play Kentucky and in the SEC schools. And I think this week it when we're, Georgia Tech has a defensive end. I think he wears number six or so. I was watching them, watching a little bit of stuff on them, and he looks legit. Now he has a. Um, they do have a, have a good pass rush, so they may get tested there this week. But you know I think once we go full game plan and, and kind of you get the full gamut in there, I think they'll look a little better. I really do. Um, I don't think any of it's phys- physical. I think it's just uh, mental errors and stuff like that of, of, of reasons why they, some guys are getting through every now and then. But I, it's fine. They, they'll, they'll be okay. I, I think there's enough leadership and experience in that room to where they'll they'll clean it up. On the wide receiver end, I, I, it was good to see, you know, Mingo made some really good catches. Oh, yeah. um, that, you know, he, he, uh, that underthrown ball from Altmaier he caught, uh, he basically pri- uh, pro-throwed that guy, um, which was <laughs> impressive to see. Um, and Jalen Robinson has been um, – he's been good. Um, yeah. You still – I still think that there's more to – to find in the wide receiver room, yeah. but that could also be getting comfortable with both quarterbacks, right? Yeah, um, it's a, that, that's a sneaky deep room, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, that, they cool. are they have some they have some really good talent. I think you got two legit SEC guys and Heath and Mingo um, that they give you like that, um, you know, big playability. They're gonna catch the ball, but then you got guys like JJ Henry, Jalen Robinson, like some speed guys um, that that are really really give us some juice there, man. So I think once the quarterbacks kind of get get it, get in their own and get. You know, get to going. I think these guys will be making some plays for us. I, I mean, all around our team, 
if you if you put Matt Corral on this team, oh yeah, this is a better Ole Miss football team than a year ago. Yes, one hundred percent agree. I'm telling you that right now. You know, we don't have a Sam Williams. I get it. We don't have some others, but but we're just deeper all around. This is a better Ole Miss football roster. We just got to find some consistency consistency at quarterback. Yeah, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, Kari Coleman um, transferred from what? TCU already has two and a half sacks. Um. I mean, it's six and a half tackles for a loss. He's yeah. been fantastic. Um, so, yeah, he's not a Sam Williams. Nobody is. Um, but he is filling that void pretty well. Yeah. He's, he's filling that Mark Robinson void to me. I mean, yeah. with, with a little bit of pass rush ability in there, he's just flying around. Dude, I love I, mean, I love watching guys like that. I mean, that's, remember Rory Johnson? When, I mean, that's that, that kind of guy that just, man, every time the ball snap, he's like, he's he's – Hawking him down, so that's that's just the way he's been, and he's been phenomenal. I mean, it, 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 that's a great addition for us. I think we're going to really um, this week. It'll be cool to see how we do. Um, it's a little bit more serviceable of opponent. If this game's close, I, I will be I will be a little worried because uh, I don't dig it into Georgia Tech. They are they're not that great. So. No, they're not. And you, if you look at Vegas, you know the line opened seven and a half. It was immediately bumped up to fourteen and a half with all the money that came in on the Rebels. So somebody <laughs> believes. Somebody believes in Ole Miss. I saw that. I saw that. I looked earlier. It was sixteen and a half. I'm like, oh wow. But if you look at their game, I mean, they were tied in the first quarter with Western Carolina, something like that. I don't know who they played. Somebody worse than we did, I think. Um, yeah, they played. Oh, they played. An, they played another FCF school, uh, Western Carolina. They were outgained by Western Carolina, uh, where a lot of damage was done was in the air. Uh, Western Carolina threw for I think 270 ish yards, but they did turn over. Uh, Georgia Tech got four turnovers, which was uh, probably uh, the turning yeah. point in that game. Well, if you look at the Clemson game, Georgia Tech's game versus Clemson as well, they um, they gave up some some passing. I wonder if I bet they have a secondary some secondary issues. Um, yeah, you know the Clemson. My question. Uh, you know the Clemson game was probably something a lot of us watched, right? It was on uh, Labor Day, and the game was the game was close until the third quarter. Now, the more I look at it, I don't know how much that's a byproduct of how bad the Clemson offense is. Yeah. Um. You know they played another FCF school this past week, and they were outgained by that is Furman, another Southern Conference team. They they played Furman. They lost, they won thirty five eight uh, seventeen. So I don't know how good Clemson is, which so if people are like, hey, Georgia Tech's not bad. Um, they played Clemson pretty close. Yeah, I mean, Clemson's defense defense is their defensive line is Alabama level. Yeah. But um that offense is pretty bad with Alangale. Um so I don't know. We don't really know who we're playing uh, in terms <laughs> of how good they are compared to, you know, we yeah. don't really know what we have, but I don't think this is going to be a strong opponent, but you know you can't just roll into a Power Five school and expect to just step off the bus and win. Yeah, no question. And they're, they'll, they'll have their guys. They'll have their guys. But you know, if you look at our overall talent, um, I mean, we should have enough to get after these guys. They, they were they have been okay versus the run. You look in the last the, their games versus Clemson and um, you know Western Carolina, I think it is, and they're okay against the run. And um, which tells me they probably have a guy or two on the D line that that is legit. So. Um, it'll be interesting to, to watch how we attack them. I mean, they are, um, <clears throat> you know, they're probably going to be at home, SEC opponent. They're going to be juiced up. We can't just roll in there and, and let our talent win. Because, I mean, you look at us. If you, even if you look at who we play, you look at Troy. I mean, you look at that score, you're not no. – I mean, they're, they're going to be better than Troy. And, yes. you know, that's that's a fact. So, we, we're going to have to have to go in there and play some play some good ball. But the 16 and a half line, though, holy smoke. That's um yeah on the road against a power five team that is um, <laughs> like you said if we do not if we don't cover or if we don't win by two scores I'm going to be a little bit concerned going into Kentucky yeah yeah no question there I mean ooh, Kentucky Kentucky does look good they are they are uh, they're pretty sound there that quarterback's legit so. and they're going to get their they're going to get their running back as well uh, their Twitter account posted yesterday that Chris Rodriguez Jr. will be back for the Ole Miss game on October 1st. So they're going to be – they're not even at full strength yet. And they went to the Swamp last week uh, and beat Florida, who beat a, uh, you know, a top-10-ranked Utah. So, um, so yeah, this is a – this week against Georgia Tech and, you know, Tulsa the following, this is a week that we've got to clean it up on offense because the, the season's going to get real serious in a hurry if we don't. Yeah, I would agree there. You know what? I know we're, we're all impressed with the defense as well, but I, yeah. I don't think they've been tested yet either. You know, yeah. I mean, they, they got guys that run around, but 
you know, early on in that game last week, there were some runs up the middle that was like, oh, why well, is Central Arkansas getting some push up the middle here? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it'll be a good test for them as well once once we get farther down the, down the road. I think we'll figure out kind of what we have on on both sides of the ball. But but you're right, man. I, I think that I think everybody can kind of sense it. Like that's that's the only crappy part about playing these these um, games yeah. at the beginning of the year. It's like. Oh, we're two and zero, but like I, I am not in any way. My needle has not been moved whatsoever. No. Like my needle is still right where we were at the beginning. Like seven, eight win team. If if you know if things go right, you know seven, eight win team. If things go really, really well and the quarterback plays well, we can get nine or ten. I'm still right there. I'm still right there. And, and if you look around the SEC, man, I mean, there Alabama looked, they looked beatable. Um, that was Georgia. So Georgia, Georgia I think, I think Georgia's the new Alabama. I mean, if you look at look at this year, I mean they, I would I, I would venture to say there was a ton of people lose money on that that Alabama Texas line. I mean, yeah. man, I, I I was I thought I would open up my phone. I was at the softball tournament. I thought I'd open up my phone and we'd be up. I mean, not not we. I'm not a freaking Alabama fan. <laughs> I, I, I thought I thought they would be up. Um, yeah, I, thought, I, I was expecting to see a 45 to 10 somewhere in there, like just a good yeah. old Alabama, just a Nick Saban, and they shouldn't even win the game. So you yeah. look around the SEC, and I mean, Arkansas looks good, but like nobody's really that. It's there for the taking, is my point. It is. Yeah. It's, 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 Alabama looks go well. It's there for the taking. So it'll be it'll be fun. Yeah, you know, uh, back to what you were mentioning about Alabama, they were sloppy against Texas. Um, now, granted, you know, that's uh, it's 11, uh, 11 a.m. game, uh, hostile environment. But still, you expect a Nick Saban-led team to um, put, your, put their foot on the throat of their opponent and grind them into dust. And that certainly did happen, yeah. uh, especially after, you know, Texas lost their starting quarterback. Yeah, no question, man. That's, um, man – Texas is I, I, the last thing I wanted was them to win, and then it'd be like, oh, when we come to the SEC, like, yeah, we got it, we got this. Like, man, that's the last thing I wanted was Texas to beat Alabama. That's brutal. But yeah, back to um, so one thing that I also wanted to ask you, you know, uh, DJ Durkin, he's gone to Texas A and M. We can talk about Texas A and M a little bit, but um, the defense, I think it looks faster uh, this year than it did. Uh, last year. Um, guys are flying around. Now, like you mentioned, uh, Central Arkansas got a lot more push on certain, some plays than um, I expected them to. Um, what has your assessment been on the defense with the uh, the coaching change uh, on that side? You know what's odd, man, is like I expect to see this totally different defense. Like the defense in general is, is much, much deeper. Um, you know, we I think – I don't think we have a Sam Williams. I don't think we have a Chance Campbell, but I think we have some solid players that we replaced them with, Corey Coleman, Troy Brown. Um, you know, you look at the stat sheet the first couple of games. I mean, these are transfers that are all our, our, our leaders in, yeah. in stats. So I, th- I think we replaced them well. Um, but the, yeah, schematically, they're running the same thing. I mean, it, it is a it is a the exact – same thing that we ran last year. So I don't know if we're doing that the first two weeks um, just because, hey, you know, we want people to think, hey, it's the same defense and so we're going to kind of switch it up. The only thing we are doing is we, we are blitzing a little more, um, you know, a little, little more A-gap blitzing, a um, lot, lot, lot more, um, you know, I would say, I would say like not, not exotic blitzes, but, but a lot more flying, flying pieces, I would say. But for the most part, man, it's the same defense. Like it's a, it's the same three down deal that we ran last year. So we just look a little better at it. And and Kari Coleman is playing a little bit of that, that the Springer role this year. So, um, I, I mean, so far it looks just the same. I mean, I, I don't really. I mean, they're they're executing a decent clip. Um, you know, they're getting making plays in the backfield. They're, they're getting to the quarterback. But but again, I mean, look who we're playing. We'll see when we face some bigger, better O linemen. Yeah. Um, you know how we look. So. Um, but so far, so good to me. I mean, I, I don't really see a drop off, um, you know, in, in the defense whatsoever when it comes to the scheme or personnel. I mean, would I love to have a, a Sam Williams? Yeah, I, I think sure. this would be it even would. crazier with him. But you know, we also are better up front um, than we were a year ago. So I did say, you know, the one thing that I was I, I'm more sure of now beyond Judkins being a star, uh, Jonathan Cruz has a big leg. I don't know if you saw the kick. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he, <laughs> Yeah, he can kick it for sure. He um, so I feel really good now knowing that uh, we've got him. I, I transfer from Charlotte. Um, he that good that kick was good from fifty five plus uh, yeah. this past Saturday. Um, how about this, Igbenosa on the defense, the the new corner number number twenty. Him and Judkins would be. I mean, 
those may be two of the best, like the freshmen, just as far as like, man, those are since probably the, the one crazy recruiting class we had, but man, those two, the, those two are legit NFL guys. Like you, you look at those guys and say, man, yeah, they're going to be on Sunday. Iguanosa has been, been awesome. I mean, he is a, um, I saw it at practice when I went and I kind of asked about it and they're like, yeah, he just, he just cut from a different cloth, just a straight up dog. Like, like there's been multiple times where he's tackled and I've heard this firsthand. He has tackled guys in shorts and practice, like just competing. Wow. And the older guys have had to like try to kick his, you know, <laughs> try to get after him, you know, like you can't, you can't be tackling guys, but he's that competitive. He's that good. And he, and he won't back down. So he has the team's respect. Um, I, I mean, dude, six, three looks like he's fast as lightning all up in receiver's face. Like, He'll be a big. He's a big time player for us. That that's one thing that's that's been really cool. I mean, we've added you know adding a guy like that, um, you know, on defense and a running back like Jenkins on offense. I mean, you keep doing that, it's it's been pretty pretty talented roster. Yeah, you know, uh, I was looking over uh, Georgia Tech last night, just kind of getting some information. A lot of their a lot of their offense is going to run through their quarterback, uh, Jeff Sims. He was. He was injured last year a good bit, but uh, he's a, uh, I think he's a third year sophomore because of COVID, but he's probably their most talented player on offense. He's going to be yep. a, uh, a speed threat. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. Uh, now, I don't know if the people around him are going to be as much of a threat as him, but anytime you've got a, a mobile quarterback, you're going to be thankful that you've got all the speed, which... Uh, we should be able to, you would think, bottle that up uh, come Saturday. Yeah, if I had to guess, they're probably going to spy him a lot of the time because, I mean, yeah, he can throw, but he, but he, where he can really be dangerous is, 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 you know, with his legs, it, just watching a little bit on him. Um, I've had to guess Corey Coleman will probably probably have him pretty much eyed out all day, and um, you know, if he if he breaks loose, you know, I, th- I think that's that's still be be you know tracking him down. So, um, other than that, I mean. For the, for the most part, if you look at their offense, I mean, O-line looks okay. I mean, yeah. it, it, they definitely were not dominating, um, you know, Western Carolina or or Clemson. So, I, I think I – mean, I think this is a game where we could really get after them. Um, so, that, that, that probably is going to take a little bit of the running out of it for him. So, um, yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how we plan on attacking them. I, I, I'm hoping – I'm hoping we go after them. I hope we blitz them. You know, I don't think he's going to sit back there and toss the pill all over us. So, I hope we go at him, hit him early, and, um, you know, really – and I think that's what they'll do. I, I really do. I think they'll get after him, um, blitz him pretty hard. And, um, you yeah, know, if we, we contain him, they're, they're not going to get much on offense. No, and this, uh, this offense um, – they just hired a new offensive coordinator. So this is their first year in this system. Chip Long came to uh, to them. He was at Tulane last year. And, you know, we played Tulane and we we handle I was actually worried about that game going into Tulane compare considering how, how about the line the line was like nine points for that game last year yeah. in Tulane. And that was after what Tulane did at Oklahoma, right? They yep. they, they barely lost to Oklahoma in Norman. Um, and then we came out and we kind of dominated them. That was actually a game I was worried about, but we shut that offense down and, you know, the offense, you know, played out of its mind as it did most of the last season. So, you know, at least we have seen this type of offense because like I mentioned, Chip Long came from Tulane last year and it doesn't look like that they're hitting on all cylinders considering their offensive output so far this season. Yeah, that's it's so weird. So when you watch Georgia Tech now, I was used to seeing like the old triple option like yeah. for so long. Like I can't I can't picture them in shotgun and stuff. It's just it's just odd when I when I was watching them. But yeah, that that'll be I mean, I do think that is a solid coach that, that they that they got from from Tulane. I mean, he does have a decent reputation, but if you look at last year, I mean, we we bottled that that um you know the offense looked really good versus like long you're saying. I mean that that was one of those games where you're like, oh boy, they're they're a little better than than, than than you would want for this time of year or so. But we bottled them up um you know on defense pretty well last year. So I, I don't think I don't think there'll be much um much of a challenge. I mean it, it, I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be much of, of a challenge this year as as well. So yeah. Um so if you're just now joining us, this is the first show, Brad and Chad show, brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, Nest and Wild Mattresses. Uh, just talking Ole Miss, just Bradley and I, you know, a couple times a week, going to get on here, talk about the Rebels, what we're seeing. Um, may not, you know, limit it to just football. You know, there's some other teams uh, doing pretty well on campus right now. You may not know this, but the Rebels actually have uh, a top 10 team on campus right now, the soccer team, uh, undefeated. They are ranked nine in the uh, – in the nation, 
Uh, according to the last poll, I think another one will come out today, but they uh, they won and tied last week. So uh, more than just football on this show, but obviously football being kind of the, the huge focus in fall, it is going to be very football focused, but we're just here to highlight the entire athletic program because there are so many great athletes that come into Oxford every year and leave. Um, we would be doing everyone a disservice to not only the players and the coaches to not show and talk about what they're doing to, uh, you know, to keep putting Ole Miss in the spotlight. Yeah, no question, man. I think, you know, if you, we're, we'll have a lot of coaches on here, a lot of players, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll really shoot to, to highlight former players, what they're doing, you know, certain guests that, um, you know, in the Oxford community and, and any, anybody has a business in Mississippi want to highlight it on here. This is going to be a true Ole Miss podcast that highlights, you know, Mississippi people, um, you know, in in Ole Miss, Oxford, wherever. But um, former players, I just think it's a it, it'll be a good platform to. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of former. We, we've talked to Chris Coggle and we've talked to quite a few players. There's a lot of former players doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, and um, and we want people to hear from them. And um, you know, we have a good um, good outreach to some of those guys. You know, having played and you know, we have a lot of them on here here to talk about their um, you know, what, what they're doing now and. And uh, we're hoping to connect some of these guys and, and and make it exciting. I know a lot of fans like to hear from hear from former players um, and kind of check in with them. I, I do it all the time. I'm like, man, I wonder what um, you know Kendrick Clancy's doing, or just uh, certain guys that you that you don't think about. Um, you know, it's, it'll be nice to hear their story and, and how they're living. Yeah. So this show, you're going to have to look at Bradley and I for or listen to both of us. So, but we hope to uh, expand <laughs> that into some other people uh, in the upcoming shows. And yeah. like Bradley mentioned, we definitely want to highlight the coaches, the players, both current and former, that have uh, you know that have made this school one that we love so much. So that, that that's definitely in the works. Um, let's let's take it back to football. And like I said, congratulations to coach Mott on a, a great start to the season for the soccer program. Like I said, ninth in the country, uh, highest ranking they've ever had. So really wanted to make sure and, uh, and mention them uh, because of the, uh, the heights that they are at, uh, which has never been seen in the program before, but let's talk a little bit more about the upcoming game against Georgia tech. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about their defense. Uh, so they're going to be running a four, two, five. They've been running that for the past, Few years, you would think with the four two five middle of the field should be open. So Trig, uh, who's already been a huge focus, right? He's already got uh, you know three touchdowns. Um, he was great against UCA, albeit it was UCA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, you know he looked great against um, you know against Troy. Uh, but you would think you know someone like him, Jalen Robinson, you know from the slot, they should be able to see success um, in the middle of the field considering what they're running, assuming that's what we're going to see as their base formation on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, if they, if they show up in a four two five, that's usually a six-man box. I'm sure they'll, they'll bring down an insert, you know, when, when we start running it. But, you know, I think if I'm laying early on and they just come up in a base defense like that, um, I said, oh, we get in there, pound them, man. Let's get in there. Let's make them bring guys to the box, um, you know, and I think that's our strength in, in a game like this. Um, you know, when we're playing a much more formal opponent, man, let's go out there. Let's get the quarterbacks comfortable. Um, let's script that first 15 plays, get the quarterbacks comfortable. Let us no crazy throws, nothing, not, not, not a ton of pressure to start. Let's get them, let, let's turn Zach Evans and Junkins loose all over them. And man, let's, let's make them start having to stack that box. So, so you're right. Triggs and, and those guys should be opening. And if you look at, look at them on paper, I mean, they struggled in the secondary this year. I mean, they gave up 200 something yards and two touchdowns to Western Carolina. So, um, you know, if, if they come out and roll out base defense, I, I don't see that happening versus us just because I think they're going to they're gonna say this. If, if I'm playing Ole Miss and I'm a defensive coordinator, what am I saying? I'm saying, okay, where are their strengths? They have some dang good running backs, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to stop, stop that. I want to force them to have to throw all game. So if I had to guess early on, they're going to they're gonna really test, um, you know, test the, the, the Ole Miss quarterbacks. And I'm going to say, hey. I'll take my chances. I, I don't think you guys can can make can make accurate throws, um, you know, with pressure and and with with a ton of guys in the box. I'll stack the box, shut down the run. I'll make you have to throw it. And um, you know, so far we don't know. Can our guys do it? We don't know. We 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 really don't. I mean, that's the crappy part so far. Is like I, I want to be confident in a guy, but we just don't know. We haven't seen enough um, from either of them to know if hey, if, if our quarterbacks need to step up in a, in a big situation. Last year, Tennessee, Matt Corral. Um, you know, stepping up, just taking over the game for us. Like, do we have that guy? I don't know, man. I don't know. And it'll be fun to see. This will be a step in the direction of helping us find out because, um, you know, Georgia Tech's not great, but they're better than what we what we faced. And if we get into a dogfight with them and, you know, it's a close game, we, we're going to – 
we're going to be in for a long season. We're going to be in for a long season. So, um, we, but we are on the road, and you know, road games are tough, new environments. So, um, it, it, sh- it should be a nice test for us. Yeah. Um, if, if this is a game where, like you mentioned, if we're, if it's in the fourth quarter and we are wondering, okay, can we pull this out? <laughs> I'm not looking forward to October 1st against Kentucky. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, no question there. It'll, it'll be a lot of stuff will be answered. A lot, a lot, a lot of, I think, I think we'll, we should, I mean, ideally what I'd like to see this week is I'd love to see us go and have a good balance attack. You know, if you're looking at it, hey, I'd like to run for four and a half yards of carry and, you know, 150 to 200 yards and let our quarterbacks there for 250 and two or three touchdowns, you know, and, and then we come out of this game going, man, okay, we have a nice balanced team. We can win kind of however. And then you want the defense to, to create some turnovers, man. When you're on the road, what do you want to do when you're on the road? You want to win the third down battle and you want to create turnovers, period. And that's how you win good road games. I mean, that's how you win most games. I mean, that, that to me, if, if you're a football fan, you want to know what stats or, or you want to really look at every game, look at third down conversions and turnovers. Most of the time, whoever wins those battles are winning the game. And that's where, that's where, that's where I'm hoping we're great this weekend. And on the road, that's where it's important. Yeah, so we will uh, we'll definitely uh, watch with uh, with anticipation to see how that goes. And uh, you know, like I was mentioning, we will have a uh, a recap show uh, later this week once that um, you know once we see uh, how the game goes, and we'll talk a little bit more about what we saw, and then you know talk a little bit about the Tulsa game upcoming. Let's shift gears just a little bit and let's kind of take a look around the SEC. Um, you know, we've, we've talked already about us. We've talked about the opponent. With our first show, I think it is kind of good to kind of set oh, yeah. um, set where things are and where we see them as we get closer to conference play, right? We don't play until uh, October 1 when we play Kentucky in the SEC, but there have been some conference games that have already played. On the Western side of things, right, you've got LSU, who lost to Florida State opening game. They played Southern last week, which you're not going to be able to take too much from. Um, I don't – I mean, I think Brian Kelly is a good coach. I don't think he – I'll leave it at that. I think he's a good coach. But I don't really know what we have at LSU yet. We have to um, we have to go to LSU, which is never easy. Um, and then you've got teams like Arkansas, who – has looked really impressive thus far. Yeah, Ar- Arkansas low key looks like the best, the best team in the West right now to me. I mean, they did lose a safety. They're all American safety. They did lose him for the rest of the season today with um, it may be shoulder. It's something along those lines. So that will hurt. Um, but Arkansas, you know, beating Cincinnati and then beating um, South Carolina, who I think South Carolina they didn't look very good in their opening week matchup. Yeah. Um, but still, they took care of business against an SEC opponent, which is something you never take lightly. Yeah, especially this early in the season as well. Uh, Auburn, I have no idea what to expect out of Auburn. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know if Brian Harson will be the coach. Um, yeah, they're, 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 they're just waiting on Lane. Auburn, uh, they're, they're just waiting on Lane. Auburn is they're going to they'll start the Lane rumors before long. I, I don't see it with them. Uh, I do not see it with them. No, um, you know we talked a little bit about Alabama thus far. Um, they're always going to be Alabama, at least while Nick Saban is there. So while they didn't look good at Texas, you got to imagine that practices have not been fun this week in Tuscaloosa, and you got to expect that they're going to clean up a lot of the mental mistakes that they made uh, playing Texas. Who do, they, who do they play this week? If you wouldn't have put, yeah. if you would, if you would, I, I want to say it's Vanderbilt, but let me double check. Man, I do not want to be. I would not want to be their opponent this week. Actually, I don't think it's Vanderbilt. I'll pull it up here in just a second. I've got. Um, well, it, it, anyways, my point is, I would not want to be their opponent this week. I mean, they are um, Nick Saban. No. Nick Saban, after a close game where you looked pretty pedestrian, um, you know he is. <laughs> oh, they play UL Monroe. So. Oh. Great. Uh, Good for so those yeah, guys. one of the Bowden boys is going to take one on the chin this weekend. <laughs> no question there. Okay. Um, so I think Mississippi State's looked good. They they have. They, well, we, one thing about them, they're a little bit like us last year where they had a lot of returners, a decent yep. amount of returners. And, you know, anytime you return an experienced quarterback, I mean, in, in that system, as a second, third year in the system, maybe third, I don't know. Um, man, he, yeah, he's just putting up stats and, and, he, and he, he looks – he looks pretty good. I mean, they're they're going to be a tough opponent. They really are. They're yeah. they're a, they're a tough team. They 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 clobbered Memphis, who, as we know, is not. They may not be as good as they have been in the past, but they're never a phone opponent to play. Yeah. Um. They always get up for playing us or state, and then um. 
they should have beat Arizona a lot worse than they did. They left a lot of opportunities out on the field. Now, once again, Arizona um, has traditionally, at least in the last few years, have not been good, uh, kind of similar to Georgia Tech. Um, but they they could have beaten Arizona by a lot more than they did. I think they beat them by you know a little over 20. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, yeah. So I think – you know, if they stay healthy, it, you know that offense is going to be a headache to play against. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. They are they, they are they are looking good. Um, well, well, one thing we get to too on here is we'll we'll eventually start picking some lines. I'm not yeah. a better at all, but I th- I think it would be funny to keep a to keep a uh, a record on the year to see right. this is how we do. I am I'm a terrible better. Like I don't sports bet at all because I feel like what I think should happen never happens in sports betting. Like I could go over for days on things that happen, but but I liked it. Let's keep a little let's keep like a little stats on, on our lines. We'll pick the lines of the week in the SEC um, each week. I think that'll be fun to to um, see who who who's got the better one. We'll start that up next week and if you're watching us on YouTube, we'll try to have a graphic up. I'm not going to put my graphic team on uh uh, on the spot here, but maybe we can have graphics up that show kind of the <laughs> record and that type of stuff, but we'll oh, see if we make that happen. Not to put anybody on the spot there, but, but so a little bit different than you, I am a sports better, but like you, I am a terrible sports better. So I am um, pretty miserable at um, picking games. Thankfully, I don't <laughs> bet too much on a game. Hopefully my wife is not watching this, um, but I don't bet too much per game, but yeah, I'm usually, um, you know, I'm usually losing uh, uh, when I ever I'm betting. You get it, do you get into fantasy football at all? I do. I play. I play fantasy. Dude, I, I, I like. I just cannot wrap my head. I hated it so much when I played because, like, no joke, you would have people in the stands like screaming at our players as they're walking off. Like, what are you doing today? My team lost. Like, they're dead serious. So it's so obviously like, <laughs> obviously like that's like something. I'm not, I've always just had such a bad view on that. People are like, oh, you don't play my fantasy league? I'm like, no, I don't want to play fantasy <laughs> football. Like, it's it's and I'm only going to play for money, right? So if uh, if there's not money for it, I can't get interested. But it's just a way to you know uh, to entertain yourself. If you know you know if you're if you're a Dolphins fan like I am, and they perennially suck, uh, it gives me a chance to watch. Uh, extra other games and stay interested in uh, some of the. Teams. I guess I guess that's a good point because I mean, it, I guess sports betting is good for the the smaller market teams too. Because on a Thursday night and it's Appalachian State versus Texas and oh well, never mind, Appalachian State got them. <laughs> no, oh, if it, if, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but yeah, if it's um, if it's if you're watching some small school, I guess it will give you some interest there. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, maybe maybe I'll start trying it with like a dollar or something. I'm not risking any money on the. It, it never happens the way it's supposed to happen, man. Like like how many people lost money on the A and M and in, in Texas this week or um, Alabama this week. I mean, tons. So. I know a few. I know a few personally that lost on the Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, um, I, I thankfully was not on that one, but I lost yeah. plenty of other bets this past weekend. So um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah. So so real quick, let's get through the rest of the West. You know, Texas A and M, which we just talked about. Yeah. Um, Jimbo is dead set on running it up the middle, um, running a smash mouth type of offense, and it's just not working. Poor Jimbo, man. I wish I wish I could be Jimbo Fisher when I grow up. You know, like <laughs> this, dude, like what a, a roster at Texas A and M with one of the best recruiting classes. I mean, he he is a, Jimbo Fisher is eight and four. And always yeah. will be just eight and four. Like there's no other way to put it. Like I I. I mean, he's a great guy. It's probably a solid defense coach, but like A and M, like you're you're being paid to do Nick Saban things, but you are doing Dan Mullen things. And like he's an offensive coach, that's the thing. Yeah, his his, his specialty <laughs> is the offense, and that's what they're running out there right now. I can't imagine the 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 Tex Ags message boards and all the different A and M message boards calling for. I, I bet it's just a dumpster fire over over there right now. Yeah, no, there, I mean, you gotta be, I mean, they spent all that money on the, on the recruits and then you got, you know, I mean, you the best recruiting class in the history of college football. And then, you know, this is what you, what years is for him? Four, four or somewhere in there, three or four. I mean, th- these are his guys, like, and, and you're in Texas, like your quarterback should be serviceable. Like, I mean, you, you just go pick, they're all over. There's five stars all over the state. So I ain't Jimbo, I ain't, I don't know, man, come on. <laughs> Let's go. I, I want to be Jimbo Fisher. I, I can go win eight games with Texas and I mean, you can <laughs> with those resources, you would think. Okay, so why don't we do the East next week uh, with our next little? Because we, we'll be playing a. We'll be getting ready to a uh, to talk about uh, an Eastern opponent since we play Kentucky the following. Yeah, uh, perfect. Pretty soon, so we can we can do that. Why don't we put a pin or start? You know, I think we've we've talked about Georgia Tech. 
I think we are both on the same page here that this is a game that we should win by multiple scores. If, if we don't, we are not the team that we thought we were going to be going into this season. Would you agree no, with that? No question. No question. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's going to be – if it's a close game, you, we're, we're worried. We're very, very worried. Yeah. You want to see at least at least two to three score win here. Okay. So, once again, stick to us. We're going to be doing recap shows at the end of the week, uh, and then you're, we're going to start doing these preview shows like we're doing today. Uh, you'll be able to find us on Twitter, TikTok. Uh, we'll be streaming this to YouTube, hopefully live in the next week or so uh, as we are doing these. Uh, and then uh, we'll also, you'll be able to find us wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, so uh, Apple, Android devices, uh, Spotify, uh, you'll be Google. able to find us on those places as well. So wherever you find your podcast, if you want to listen, if you want to watch, uh, we will make sure and keep you up to date on all of our social network accounts so you can find us in whatever way that you choose to do so. So, Bradley, Chad, uh, we, hey, we, we we can't go we can't go anywhere. We got we got to predict the score. What you got this week? All right, my score is going to be. I think it's going to be forty five twenty. Whoa, okay, I like that. I got us. I got us getting a ton of turnovers this week. I got Ole Miss thirty five, Georgia Tech 10. 35, 10. All right, so 45-20, 35-10. We will see how close we are next week uh, after we do our uh, kind of our recap show. Uh, it may be Saturday night. It may be Sunday. We'll flesh yep. that out. And once again, we'll let you know on all of our socials. But, um, but yeah, I look forward to, to whipping your ass on these predictions uh, every week. <laughs> so it's going to be my pleasure to be able to take this so-called football expert and take him behind the shed when it comes to these predictions. I love it. I love it. it it'll be, we'll have to put something on that. Okay. We can, we can, once, once conference play starts for us, we will have a little, uh, maybe a little uh, competition uh, set up for that. Okay. Sounds good, man. See you, Chad. Look, look forward to the, to the post-game commentary, man. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Hey, Howdy, Toddy. Thanks for listening to the Brad and Chad Show. Follow the boys on social media for more content. And don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been an Ole Miss Network production brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, made in the USA.